Welcome back. Hello, future. I haven't done like a normal YouTube introduction in so long. Hey there, future tubers. Um, I gotta, I gotta get back into the let's play style, right? It's different than streaming style. Um, welcome back. It's probably just like one or two days between uh, the. I think we did the, the core suppression of Bina on day 42, and then I just did a couple quiet grind days between then and now. We're gonna do day 45 on camera because technically this is the first time we've done day 45 because we'll get some new dialogue at the end of day 45 and then we will get a memory imprint on day 46. So uh, this will be the first time doing that, but there's not much to really talk about. So this is just a, this will be a pretty easy episode just to show off kind of how my grind works. Um, you know, you future tubers have missed out a lot of grinding and uh, I should at least show it once before we get to the end game. So um, sit back and enjoy the ride. The smooth dulcet tones of Blue Ankylo. Uh, sometimes the chat gets a little bit off topic while we're doing these grinds, so don't mind them. Uh, there's not a whole lot of in-game content to talk about when we're just trying to get stats up, kinda. So, you know. You'll forgive me if we end up talking about some non-game content a little bit but uh, you know I'll do my best to explain what's going on so for now we are just splitting people up a little bit the reason I like to do this at the beginning of the day is because uh, certain ordeals will just pop in and squish everyone in uh, the main rooms or pop a bunch of clowns around the outside hallways and you can either try to click on all the clowns and worms and stuff and chase them around or you could just have uh, a bunch of people stationed in all the hallways where they don't get squished and they're all pretty super strong at this point. So one of them can solo most early game uh, ordeals. And we just have them deal with the bad stuff. So that's generally what I'm doing. Now, uh, for setup for our grind, most of the people that need grinding are in this area because I've got three really good abnormalities for training. Uh, four if you count Night of Despair, which is close by. Uh, now, Zack is done. He's already got basically cap stats, so he's going to move up. And then the other four here are the ones that need some stats. And we're going to clear these guys over as well. Uh, this specific job is just to get things primed. The first person that works the night gets a little uh, token, and that just means they can't work for the rest of the day. Uh, they get some other bonuses like defensives and stuff. Half damage from red, white, black. Double damage from blue. It's a pretty good buff in general. Anyway, so we get that out of the way. And then I like to organize for one, two, three, four abnormalities. Four different sort of people. And they each have their sort of specialty. So the black swan, you can't train attachment or temperance. But you can do the other three reasonably well. Um, the dreaming current, you cannot train insight. But... Kind of the other three are all pretty good. A little bit better on instinct, but you know they're all they're all decent. Um, the the cloud thing here can work any of them technically, but it's better on insight. This is the best for insight and a little bit lower for the other three. And then the night of despair is really good for attachment and insight, not so good for the other two. So that's kind of the distribution. So like we've got uh, Orga here, who's got capped temperance and prudence. So we could send her to handle the Black Swan and just work on Instinct and Repression to try to get them closer to the cap. Then we've got uh, Cole, who's got kind of the same idea. Uh, I think I'll send them over here, probably for the Diffraction thing. Uh, right, Orgus moving over there. We've got another person that's Fortitude and Justice. That can be uh, the current. And then one more person. Okay, I've got a lot of people that don't have enough fortitude and current, so you know, I don't have quite enough places to work. Um, I should have focused harder on training those earlier days, I suppose. Well, we'll get you prudence to cap for now, and maybe I'll split. Uh, maybe I'll uh, rotate people around a little bit once we get sort of used to it. <sighs> so flex style, our, our famous rapper. And then Cole, we've got like two people that have stats there below 100, so I'll start with those. And uh, over here, we'll start with Instinct. I think Justice is less important than Fortitude and Prudence. So 
So that's like the four jobs we're doing specifically to train. Those are the main ones we're focusing on. We can do other things, but it doesn't really help us gain our stats. It just makes time go by faster and causes trouble. Like you work the Firebird to the point where it escapes. We, we do have options for good stat gains in other locations. So sometimes I'll be like, oh, Squatch Meal's down. Like 138 is kind of your... 138 or 140 is where it caps you. So hey, we'll have him work his prudence a little bit. Just make sure you don't send someone to their death accidentally or you have to reset your day. So that's why I generally focus on the training the training squad. And we'll leave the, uh, the random backups for later. So yeah, I try to get a bit of a groove going. Every now and then I'll look around for someone who needs a little bit of a top up for one of their stats. Um, the Waz tend to be pretty good for getting some stats if you're a little bit low on something. Um, the Aleph's of course are great if you can survive it. And you know, like maybe Pluto Pep up here wants to cap out his temperance once again. So that keeps us busy, gets us a bit of energy, but mostly I just do that to break up the grind. Okay, so Flexstyle really only needs Instinct. He should be done probably first out of all of the uh, rookies right now. Once he's done, I can probably cycle him out with someone else who's got a, a more... Like right now, Tasha can't really work on anything else besides Prudence. So I'll, I'll, once I've done a few works with Flexstyle, I'll probably cycle those two. Other people have a lot more room to grow. But uh, yeah, if you watched the last episode, which you should have, that was the big Bina suppression. And uh, it went really well, like better than I was expecting it to. Um, so you might think, well, Blue, you probably did too much preparing. That was too easy. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think uh, I think I did enough. I did enough preparation that it went well. And if I had done not enough preparation, it may have killed a bunch of people and then I would have been sad. But uh, the end game that is coming up shortly should be more difficult than just the Bina suppression. So it's not time yet to, to, to say if I've, if I've over-prepared or under-prepared. Um, eventually I might admit that, okay, my, this was too easy, but I, I'm, not, I'm not ready to say that yet. I still am a little bit concerned that the end game will be brutal enough that I won't be happy. Basically, uh, we've talked about it quite a lot during the live streams, but I'm not a huge fan of like the RTS mechanics, you know, selecting, clicking, trying to dodge, like the kind of micro mechanics of, of Lobotomy Corp is not my favorite part. And especially when you can't pause the game, I get frustrated. I like, I like this game more for its, um, like story and and trying to sort of puzzle out how the abnormalities work once you've figured them out it's fine and it's kind of like a memory game where you try to keep track of what everyone does everywhere in your base that's fine that's also a reasonable uh, mechanic uh, but being able to pause and think about it is part of what I want to have like it's if it's the if you can't do that then I'm just not sure what I'm doing I, I don't like the the pressure I guess see I have some people who could use some grinding but I'll probably forget about them for the most part. The Child of the Galaxy is also pretty good for pick a stat, grow a stat kind of stuff up here. But uh, yeah, so uh, the trouble is, also I don't think this game is very good at the RTS kind of m m controls. You know, like if you played, you know, Starcraft, Warcraft, Age of Empires, you know, those kinds of things. There's usually like control groups, uh, you can... Um, hotkey different things, you can um, set formations oftentimes, and there's a little basic AI for your guys you might be able to control. Depends on the game, right? But in Lobotomy Corp, you can't even control where in a room your guys move. The only way you can change position is to order them to the next room, or back to that room over there. It looks like I can make them move left or right, but I couldn't group them up in the middle. They might randomly move on top of each other, but you can't, you know, you don't have those kinds of controls. So difficult, like, RTS kind of bosses, and we've got more of those coming, um, aren't 
I don't think the game is really set up very well for that. The game seems to be set up well for, you know, a base sim, a, a management sim kind of thing. Where you focus on building, you know, getting the right abnormalities in the right space. Kind of more like a Sim City or a, what's a good idea? I mean, we've played lots of base managers, base builders, town builders on the channel. You know, it's more like that. It's more of a strategy thinking game than a reflex clicky game. And as we get to some of the some of the core suppressions, like Hawkma with no pausing, and essentially even Bina had some of that, and some some boss mechanics, it sort of strays away from base manager and closer to RTS uh, reflex clicking. Anyway, I don't think the game is as strong with that, so uh, I'm a little bit concerned the end game is going to have a lot of that. Because that seems to be the difficulty it's aiming towards. The difficulty isn't managing your base anymore. The difficulty is clicking things quickly. And remembering, you know, I know who can work this, I know who can work that. Getting your, your APM, your action per minute, high enough to handle all the stuff. I'm not so sure that's what I like. Afterlife? I don't think I've played that one. I don't think I've heard of it anyway. Oh, but anyway, so basically I figure what I can control then is if the game wants to force a lot of micro skills on me, and I'm not necessarily very good at those or as well practiced or as enjoyable, what I can do is some grinding. So I can, I can do the thinking part. I can uh, try to build my base up with nice safe abnormalities. I can get my stats nice and high, gear up my guys efficiently, kind of you know, do do that part of the game as as carefully as I can, the um, the management side, and hopefully that will carry me through with some basic kind of RTS reflex mechanics. I mean, it's not like I've never played StarCraft or anything. Uh, I just that's not my thing generally, right? I've played some StarCraft. I mean, I've you know the StarCraft Two campaign is a lot of fun, but you can pause. Uh, what I don't like is like the multiplayer, high speed, high stress stuff. I like to be able to think about stuff. Okay, so first, uh, potentially dangerous ordeal. As long as I've prepared correctly though, there should be no real harm done. So sometimes I just like to queue these up ahead of time, just to uh, be safe. When there's a dangerous ordeal, um, I can send all the rookies away, so they don't have to fight it. So they're busy doing like a, a work, and then while that's going on, the high level employees are like, all right, we'll deal with this. You rookies, you can have a nap. But uh, at this point in the game, the noon ordeals are all pretty simple. The purple one probably takes the most amount of effort because you have to move out of the way and then, therefore, you can't just kill them with reflexes. Like, if other other noon ordeals spawn in the hallways, and your guys will just kill them right away. And they won't squish anyone. But, it's not like it's difficult, just, you know, a bit of, bit of clicking. Okay, so we've done a lot of our first round of training. Let's pick a different stat. Well... Okay, let's finish cycle four. Flex style will definitely be capped his HP fortitude. And then after that, after cycle four is done, I will rotate uh, to a different stat for all the, the trainers. And the reason I'm going pretty hard on stats right now is um, after today, day 45, it's our final memory imprint. So... That's our last chance to make a save that we will rewind to, assuming we can rewind. Well, we'll see. Um, anyway, f assumedly for the last f four days, that's our last sort of checkpoint. And I want to have basically everything up to this point pretty much level maxed so that I don't have to worry about grinding anymore. So this is like the last sort of grind. And then after today, um, if I need new employees, I do have lobotomy points to pay for their stats. And maybe we'll just, uh, you know, pay for level 5 employee, basically. Nuke the obelisks. The obelisks were the first really scary ordeal we had in the series. 
like back in, I don't know what episode that would have been, episode 5 or 6 or something. I think they wiped my whole team because I didn't know what, you know, when you, when you don't know what to expect. Usually, you keep your guys in the main department. And uh, they just wiped the whole base out before I had any, I was really salty about that. <laughs> Once you understand the mechanic, you're like, oh, just don't stand in the big rooms. But the game doesn't really give you any kind of warning. It's A, a lot of the game is like noob traps. It's, if you've never seen this before, you're going to restart your day. And then once you've seen it, you just have to remember and it's not that bad. I mean, overall, I quite like the game. But uh, there are some mechanics that... I mean, I guess, I guess it's fine to have some of that. But I'd prefer if straight up traps were not super common. Okay, last, this is the last job of uh, the first set of stats. And then next, this will reset the meltdowns. And then I will uh, move some people around. Maybe just for fun, we'll show off a midnight ordeal for the future tubers. Um, I don't know, I don't think you guys have actually seen an Amber Midnight. I think for the Let's Play last year, we had a quest to clear... Uh, Tiprith had a quest to clear a midnight, or I think someone had a quest. And I think for the channel we did the robots, uh, the green midnight with the laser. So you should have seen that. It's really easy now in the end game. You just DPS it down super fast. Um, and I know I did the violet midnight during the Hawkma suppression, which was ridiculous. But hey, you got to see how that worked. Um, but I don't think you've ever seen an amber midnight. So if we get one uh, for this episode, I think I'll show it off. So I'm going to move Tasha down. Don't forget Tasha. And we're going to move Flex Style out of the way, because he's all grown up. And then... Orga is going to start working on Justice. Um, Cole has been working on Prudence. So he's going to work on Fortitude or Justice. Let me just wait for everyone to get to position here. So... F f uh, not Flex Style. Oh, you went the wrong way. That's why I could lost track. Uh, so Tash is going to work Fortitude first. Cole's probably good. So both of these guys are going to do some Fortitude training. That's fine. And we're going to stick st switch to Justice training over here. And then it's just three people. Try to get their stats capped a bit as we get towards the mid Midnight Ordeal. Now, there were some other people, like this guy in here, that had some room to grow. Yeah, 118 Justice definitely has some room to grow. Um, but most people, I mean, that just that's just someone I missed. I probably meant to get them into the 130s before I moved them upstairs, and I just missed one of the numbers. Uh, there is, like, a small stat drop-off every day. I, I think it must be percentile. Like, there must be a chance every day that your stats lower a little bit, like one or two. Um, but I don't think it's guaranteed or everyone would have much lower stats by now. So it might be like 50% of the time or 25% of the time you lose one stat kind of thing. Uh, maybe one stat randomly or two stats randomly, I don't know. But it's a small penalty. Um, not enough to really stress about. I thought it would be a lot worse with a giant base like this with 50 employees. But someone up here who's barely done anything in a long time They've lost a few stats, assuming they were 138 and everything, but overall, it's not very consequential. Oh, one thing for the future tubers I learned during my grind. Um, so points in Fortitude and Prudence directly relate to your HP, SP, that's easy. Um, for Temperance, one point, like the 138 number, each one of those points is 0.2% of a success rate. So uh, it rounds in the, in the tooltip there, but it's... It's 0.2% for work speed and success rate per point. So every five points is 1% is easy way to see it. And it's the same for justice. Or, uh, I think it's the same. But it shows you the percentile here. Or no. Yeah, it's the same thing. So, five points equals 1%. Uh, work success is really important. Uh, because that's directly undoing this uh, work success rate, right? So we have a negative 16%. Um, that's undone by our, um, temperance stat, and it doesn't show you on these screens, but there is some percentage associated with each, with, with your level of work too, your temperance 5, temperance 4, 
whichever work you're actually picking. But but the work success rate is added on no matter what, and that makes a huge difference on difficult abnormalities. Huge difference. Orga already focused on fortitude. Now she's doing justice. Uh, I, I don't know if I ever talked about it on camera for the future tubers, but um, I did look up the mechanics for stat growth a little bit more in depth. It's pretty complicated, the, full, the overall rule, but um, essentially there's a comparison between your employee level and the difficulty of the abnormality. So the higher your level, level 1 to 5, the, the actual rank of your employee, kind of the less stats you get per job. Um, and then the higher the rank of the abnormality, the more stats you get per job. So that's pretty logical. You might not be surprised by that. That's simple. But it's actually, in addition to that, it's the number of success box you get. Like, whatever the, whatever points you get, like HP up, right? It's based on the success rates, the success boxes. So the more positive boxes you have at the end of the cycle, at the end of the job, um, the more stat however the game calculates in the background that you know there's you get more stats with a with a 20 result than a 10 result basically if i'm trying to say <laughs> um so you need high level abnormalities a lot of good successes like this is much better 22 there right um there's also a multiplier for how much damage you take so it's based on like the percentage of hp at the end of the job uh, I think like if you take 0 to 10% damage, you get like a something like 10 or 20% bonus to your stats, to your stat growth. And the more damage you take, uh, if you get nearly killed, you actually get much less stats um, from the uh, work as well. So high level abnormalities, successful jobs, like successful rates, and taking little damage all help. Uh, there's also that perk from uh, Hod that gives you plus 25% stats or something like that. There's also the benefit for having uh, clerks alive in this department, which is a small bonus. It's only like plus 5% at highest. Uh, that all applies. There's, there's there's like one or two other mechanics though, I forget. But that's like the gist of it anyway. Um, getting good results is the big trick. Taking little damage if possible. The regular stuff. I feel like every time I explain it, I feel like I'm missing one little detail. Uh, we could do a dusk ordeal. Uh, maybe I'll just skip it. The problem with the dusk ordeal is it's a whole. I'd have to reset everyone's position. <laughs> we should probably show it off. I'd like to show off a midnight ordeal for today because it's kind of. It might be our last chance to safely do a midnight ordeal. I generally skip dusks because they're annoying. <laughs> I'll start grouping people up for it, though. So we're gonna probably just focus on the upstairs for this one. We don't want people hanging around in hallways. And we'll probably just have two groups upstairs. One left side, one right side. I mean, I have, I'm sure I've shown off Dusk or, De or Amber Dusk before. It's not like... This is not the first time we'll be showing that off, but to get to the midnight, you know, we got to get through that. Oh, I forgot about these guys. I think I have an extra group on the right side, because I think all of the central team went to here. So to balance the teams, I'll move the, the discipline department to the left. Not that the teams need to be balanced that bad, it's fine. We have so much damage potential with our group. Um, I mean, this is kind of why I want to show it off as we prepare for the end game. Just demonstrating how powerful our high stat, high gear teams are. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, tomorrow is day 46, so you might as well have fun today before things get crazy. This is the last, the last 
the last happy day before the last day before winter hits <laughs> this is the dusk of our of our facility night is coming and it's full of terrors <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll keep the training squad down here and uh, while we're doing the ordeal, they'll just stay in the main room. Main rooms are safe from Amber Dusk. Hallways are not safe. Many janitors will die, as is tradition. I would expect, probably I've got my fortitude stats max at this point. So after the Dusk Ordeal, I'll pick a different stat to train on these guys if I can remember what they've done. It's hard to remember which stat you've already trained as you get later in the day. So I know Cole and Tasha have done a lot. I'll just, I think I'll put them on this side and then I'll keep uh, Orga over here. So put her in the main room first. So after she's done her work, she'll just run back into the safe spot. One last uh, suppression, sure. All right, here we go. I mean, worms aren't really going to be that bad, but... Dusk of Amber. So, in case you forgot, big worms, they spawn at one hall, they walk to the other side, then they teleport. Um, if you get in front of them, they do deal quite a lot of damage. Not as bad as the greed escaping, but enough to hurt. So I generally only fight them from behind, although at this point I have, with a strong hit squad, killed a group from the front. But for the most part we'll try to avoid that, because it's not necessary. Uh, one thing that's quite useful on them is slow bullets. They, uh, if you don't have the DPS to kill them quickly, which you know we do, uh, <laughs> it's kind of crazy the DPS we have now. This is our DPS cut in half, and... Uh, they go down almost instantly. But earlier on in the game, this was like the patience uh, ordeal. Because you had a much weaker squad. You really had to wait for them to spawn on a good spot. So that you could kill them before they, uh, before they got away without dying. Whereas now, it takes like half a second and they're all dead. So, I mean, I can slow it down one of these times if you want to see the, the carnage. Next time I get one spawning, well, actually, we can probably go to the back here. I'll try to buy us a little bit of extra time here. Also, by having really high justice stats, your guys walk faster. So getting behind them actually takes less time as well. With low stats, it's a lot harder. But yeah, the team is pretty crazy strong. <laughs> and that's like half the team, so... Color this Ankylo impressed with our endgame potential. This is, of course, how we defeated things like Bina so quickly. Okay, we've got another worm spawning below us. And another worm spawning here. This is a long walk. I don't normally I wouldn't expect us to travel this far and still catch it. But I will try, thanks to the power of uh, slow bullets. Maybe I'll give it another slow here. Yeah, it's gone. That was still too far. Right, it's back. These hallways are shorter too. It doesn't take as long to cross them. It's probably the most difficult spot. Well, it's a good spot to catch them. It's just you've got the least amount of time. So, this one's maybe. If I if I paused quicker, I might have been able to grab that one more reliably. I think we got him. Yeah, DPS. Okay. 
And there's still a couple left. Like I said, patience ordeal. You gotta take your time and wait for the worms to come to you. Sadly, these hallways are so long, once they spawn there, it takes 30 seconds to get across. Ah, uh, maybe. I know we didn't make it last time, but I'll try. It's already half dead, so maybe. Kill, kill. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, there's one up there. We're not going to be able to hit that one. That's probably the last one, though. But you get to see the green midnight. So that'll be fun. Ah, well, janitors, nobody... <laughs> I've got bad news for the janitors. <laughs> uh, we're going to be going through a midnight ordeal today, so janitors, you know... They're not long for this world. Got him. Okay, well, let's just move everyone over here. I will have to do a little bit more um, splitting up to do the the midnight, though. Sadly, uh, you don't want to bring short-range weapons to the midnight ordeal, which complicates things a little bit for doing this quickly. But uh, for now, let's just finish our training, and then I'll try to talk about... Well, I think we've talked about it before, but essentially, if you're using a very short-range weapon, you stand too close to the laser. You stand too close to the sun. So I think Orga might be done training here, actually. Um, I think she spent a cycle on Justice and a cycle on Fortitude. And then... Tasha and Cole just spent a cycle on Fortitude. I think Tasha spent a cycle on... Um, Prudence up with uh, the Snow Queen. Or not the Snow Queen, the Despair. I can't remember which one it was. But I'm pretty sure Tasha started with that. So Tasha could use like a little bit of justice, and then Cole probably needs, maybe they both need justice, because he would have done justice, or he would have done prudence down here. Okay, that's... seems likely that a few cycles of this will be enough. I mean, I, again, if they don't get fully capped out, it's fine. So the trouble is, I have to filter out weapons from that group. Um... There's a couple specific weapons we don't want to bring in. Um, the uh, gold, the the weapon from the the King of Greed. It's kind of a claw weapon. It's really good, but it's short range, so a little bit dangerous. Is there any other really short range weapons I've got equipped? That might be the main one. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, I can find those two fairly quick. Well, I say that. I've got a lot of employees in here. Gold Rush. First click. Totally random fluke. So I need, there's two people that are wearing that. Ankylobot. Helping me out. those up. Let's see if I can find the other gold rush. There it is. Okay. Now the trouble is, can I recognize any other names of weapons that uh, are short range? So if there's like a Crimson Scar or... Crimson Scar was from the Big Bad Wolf and... Well, there's one from Little Red and one from the Big Bad Wolf. They're both short range. They're not considered very short range. And they might be dangerous, but I'm not 100% sure on it. So generally when I'm not 100% sure, I just pull them out. So it's safe. Uh, but can we find something like that? Hmm. If it's a spear, it's definitely medium range. Uh, most swords are, are medium. A lot of these are long range. Spores of spear.
Well, it's hard to be 100% confident. But just looking at the names on the top right, I don't recognize any short-range weapons in the list. There's not all that many. And I think I may have unequipped them during the boss fight with Bina because Bina, um, I didn't want to have weapons that, like the trouble with the uh, Little Red and the wolf, Big Bad Wolf's weapons, uh, although they're pretty strong, they will do friendly fire damage once you take that, once you are injured at half health. So I felt like once I realized that, I was like, well, that's not very safe. So we're not going to keep those equipped just in case we take a big hit. Because I did not have time to, to like, micromanage damage like that. You know, you could you could pump healing bullets into your team or split them out when they were damaged or whatever. But especially when you can't pause, that's not really a great option. So I may have unequipped stuff like that. Okay, I think... Hopefully I have all the short range weapons. If someone dies right now, I'm going to be a little bit angry. <laughs> because um, we just spent like half an hour grinding stats, you know. Oh, we didn't wait for the rookies to get up there. I'll just wait for everyone to get there. It should be fine the way this, this boss battle works or this midnight ordeal works, but... You know, if you haven't seen this in a year, you might be, maybe be a little bit hyped here. Alright, trigger it with whatever, whoever wants to trigger it. Tasha can go say hello to Porcubus, nice friendly uh, thorn dog. So this giant laser machine shows up. I'm pretty sure you can just start DPSing it as soon as it shows up. So we just pop in there and start smacking it. Um, it's really hard to see what's going on or hear what's going on these days. But the shorter your weapon is, the closer you are to the middle. And even though the laser is pointing up, you're still in the hitbox if you're standing too close. And it just kills you instantly. Now, as long as you've got enough DPS, the clock hand will never be a problem. Because, well, you'll see. Our, I mean, we could pause for a second. This thing is just getting wrecked. Um, it is a little bit weak to black damage, so you could try to prioritize that. This clerk is actually going to be very lucky. <laughs> He's just sitting there with a pistol shooting it. This janitor man, he should die, but... Thanks to our incredible DPS output, he's fine. So we actually didn't even kill all the clerks in any department. Usually this is... The first time we saw this, it was so difficult. He had to... The laser made it all the way around. We had to try to jump over the laser and then do a second round with it and all that. If you fight it early game, definitely, definitely a lot of work. Not, a, not the most difficult midnight, but tricky. Nowadays, though... <laughs> <laughs> Shredded, right? The clerk was carrying us, yeah. So, you know, we spent an hour there, whatever. Not really an hour. It's like, I play on times two speed, so half of that. And now we should see our first intro dialogue for day 46 that I've never seen. Oh, yeah, there's still abnormalities to select. So... I have had a pretty big list of things I'm trying to avoid. This is very high on the do not pick ever list. Uh, the greed is, yeah, we could handle it, but um, you know, we don't want that really. It's uh, It escapes pretty easily, so it, you actually, it's very similar to the Amber Ordeal, except if you come in front of it from the wrong side, you just get one shot. It's not even that difficult to suppress, it just breaks out all the time and it's like some attention to try to catch it without accidentally getting eaten. Uh, it'll eat a bunch of clerks because it teleports around. But honestly, it's not that bad. Except that endgame stuff, we have a different layer of keeping things easy. So, Beauty and the Beast is nice and easy. Death class, we can just work insight on it. Technically, you're, you have to alternate. Normally, you would alternate like repression and then insight or something. But uh, we can just forget about the repression entirely and just do insight every time because we don't care about the energy. And it's totally safe. Ah, 
Ah, story time. What a nice office I have. I have a pillow. A long time has passed since my loved ones left with their broken bodies and hearts. We finally met after taking such a long detour. Guess nice little little uh, mustache or not mustache, a nice little beard there. Looking a little old. Old man Ankylo. Old man Ankylo. I sent you a letter one day. That old strange letter that had the same name for sender and recipient. It told you that we would meet soon. Who, why do you hesitate? Please come with your mind at ease. At ease. I hope this environment satisfies you. I tried my best to recreate our office. You need at least one place in life to feel comfortable, don't you? I, I like how we have like an old CRT monitor. You could at least give us like a, a, a proper LCD. Come on, cheapen out. I mean, like we got one right behind us. Like, get with the times. However, I speculate you feel that this place is a bit more serene than you might remember, so to say. There are many reasons for that. This is a reflection of your heart, after all. The emptiness in your mind must be what makes this place so void. We weren't particularly fond of untidiness, but there she was, always making a mess out of an organized room. There were times when we were used to such messiness, giving up on cleaning the room. Did you, did you guys ever notice? It, it came to me one night. Um, the characters in the background of the story, there's been a... For the, the manager, whoever whoever the boss man is that maybe we are. We started out as X, but maybe A and X are the same person, of course. There's B, who was our buddy. Um, turns out pretty much to be, I think his name is Christopher or something. No, no, Benjamin, of course. B for Benjamin. And he's turned into Hawkma, uh, I think, anyway. And then there's uh, C for Carmen. And remember at the very beginning of the game, Angela's like, do you like A, B, or C? And I think that's, you know... A for the boss, B for Benjamin, C for Carmen. Carmen turned into Angela, Benjamin turned into Hawkma, A turned into X. It's kind of neat, right? Lots of little hidden details. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry. Sadly, our hearts could not bear to recreate such a moment. I am sure that now you know. This space changes to the rhythm of your heart. Isn't there a song about that? This office is born from your heart, siphoned up from your deepest subconsciousness. Yes, many parts of this facility were extracted and created from our minds. How did you think this building... How do you think... How did you think building such enormous underground structures in such a short period of time was possible? I figured robots and infinite janitors. We needed multiple extractions until we finally solidified amorphous images into something tangible. We've repeated it so many times until the memories were blurred and emotions were dulled to a point where even the original sin was forgotten. Yes, there truly were countless repeats. We did ask Angela about that at one point. It must have been roughly ten years outside while this facility has been trapped in a cycle of length of 10,000 years. I mean, I did try to ask her. I feel like having some sort of estimate would be nice. 10,000 years we've been cycling. Wowzers. 10 years outside. So remember the, uh, the visitor from the bunnies, the rabbits? She's like, why do I have to sign this contract again? Well, we've been spending an awful lot of time in here. She has not been spending a lot of time out there. So even if we renew our contract every one year, that's what? A thousand times ratio? So that's like three times a day for her. <laughs> so I could see her being a little bit annoyed if once per year for us seems like it's been a nice long break. And she's like, guys, I was here a few hours ago. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway, continuing on. This eternity is fascinating. All humans are given only one life to live. The future comes to us like the relentless waves of the sea. We cannot go against them. We are merely pushed back. Time track technology could only reverse time in a very limited area. This tech was used for trivial things, such as granting an infinite moment of death to a condemned man, or to show to those whose days are numbered their happiest moments. However, when combined with our energy, 
this small technology could bloom into something bigger. We invested in them without hesitation, even though they required a massive amount of funding and energy. That's how Time Track's second invention came to life. If time could be reversed infinitely, we could reach the sky that seemed unreachable. Unfortunately, breaking an absolute law of nature cost us. Although we could rewind time infinitely, it always left some form of distortion. Perhaps this technology has still not been perfected. No man could keep their sanity intact in this place. But here you are. You've reached this point, even though you've limped and groveled along the way. Of course, it wouldn't have been possible if not for Angela, but it is a Heruclean achievement that you went through that journey. Please, let your body and mind rest, if just for a moment. You must be exhausted. The path after this will be brutal. Extremely brutal. Uh, well, us. We, whom you will meet again, will also be brutal. They will not let you pass as simply as I do. If by any chance you think you're not ready, it is okay to go back to the first act. If you've made it here once after such a long and hard time, you will surely come here again, no matter how long it takes. We literally have all the time in the world. There's no need to hurry. Grind out those codexes, build up your stats, get those core suppressions done, son. You're not ready. Just keep in mind that the situation will be different if you move forward from now. You will be given harsh trials and faded, saturated questions we could not answer. And I am sure you already know, you can reverse time, but you cannot reverse a tale. A blue anky tale. Welcome to Architecture. exciting. Finally in some new content. The Bina suppression was almost lackluster how quickly she went down today, but now finally, end game for real. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be happy to be winning this game and not giving up like a little baby. We're going to crush it the game for those future tubers that are wondering how things are going we have not had a single crash the game's been mostly quite stable there has been a few um lag spikes and stuff so i restart the game every now and then but we have not had any um instability problems like i had last year so i'm pretty happy i don't think we've had any crashes nothing too suspicious now we're off to a good start. The two starting abnormalities... This is a big section, right? Um, we have eight sort of final abnormalities for our base. And the first two are really easy. This one doesn't really do anything. And this one doesn't really do anything. So we just have to pick six more that don't crush us. And then figure out how all the final bosses work, of course. But abnormality-wise, I'm really happy with the base. Uh, we're running out of easy abnormalities, don't worry. There's not very many easy ones left, but, um, so far so good. If I can avoid, you know, army in black, mountain, that kind of stuff, we'll hopefully have a good shot at it. And, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna go 47, we'll get two more, 48, we'll get two more, 49, we'll get two more, day 50, that's it, everything is unlocked. So, next time, suppress the Midnight of White and have enough energy. I guess it was a good idea to show off a Midnight, because now we get a special Midnight. Gotta prove oneself. Alright, future tubers, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed a kind of uh, calm, calm Before the Storm episode. I don't think I'm going to recruit... I could recruit, you know, just for, for question's sake. I could still recruit a couple more people... Uh, it costs a lot to, to max justice, but like I could still recruit a level 3 justice. I could get two more people and try to train them on justice in the background, which maybe I will. The more people we have, probably the better. So I might, I haven't decided yet, but I might just recruit a couple more rookies. I might not focus on them a whole lot, but I have to move three people down here anyway. 
and uh, having some more... I don't know if this is going to be a good time to train. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a terrible idea. But, you know, I have some points. Or we could save the points for deaths, because if someone dies, we don't lose their gear. Uh, so theoretically, you know, a death is fine. By the same token, recruiting someone and training them up is basically the same thing. We just pass the gear over when, uh, you know, our, our level 5 super employee dies. But, uh, yeah. That is all for this episode. So thanks for watching Future Tubers, and next time, Endgame. It will be recorded on Halloween even. Ooh, so spooky. Thanks for watching. See you next time.